So yesterday I done a conditioning session for the stall to press to handstand. Now the stall to press is a common goal for people, especially when they first get their initial press to handstand, they normally want to progress it to a stall to press. So today I'm just going to run through what I've done in the workout, which is pretty simple, um, and then the basics of learning the stall to press. So if you don't have it, you could still do a conditioning one. Uh, you just have to break it down into some components, uh, like the separate parts of the stall to press, and train it like that, but you could still do higher volume. Um, to cover the conditioning work. So yesterday I had about half an hour to train and I'd done uh, stall to presses from the floor. Uh, I just warmed up to the point so I could start to get some presses from the floor. So for you guys, if you have a stall to press already, just go for as many repetitions as you can. Um, try and set some boundaries in terms of what technique you're going through. You can see on my video that my arms are bending slightly, my feet are dragging on the floor a little bit, but I'm trying as best I can to uh, limit those things. Um, but still just going lots of volume, so I allow it to happen. And if you don't have the stall to press, now we can break it down into its components. So we have probably the simplest way to look at it is can you press to handstand? So if you can straddle press to handstand, you could straddle press up, do an eccentric press down through the stall to press. If you don't have that, could you do it with your hands elevated? If you can do it with your hands elevated, I'd use that as your session. So you straddle press up, eccentric down either with your hands elevated or not if you don't have that yet i would separate the movements so if you're going to do an eccentric for your standard press so you might kick to handstand and then a slow eccentric down so whether that's back against the wall or freestand in and then a transition to the straddle l so if you look at this point now you could then go from that point to your uh, straddle L position. It's how do you get through there? So some people might not have the flexibility to get through. So see, I'll keep my feet on the floor and then lift them up. So I just have enough fle active flexibility to come through, but my feet always drag just a little bit. Um, and in some ways that can help me keeping my toes down towards the floor because as soon as I bring the toes up, I fall backwards. So if you can get through like that, that's one option with the view of eventually being able to get rid of that toe touch or you can elevate the hands so that would stop you from doing it. If you don't have the flexibility to get through, what's your options? You could raise your hands quite a bit and you could also keep your knees bent. So you could do something like on a box. Now, obviously, you might not have an eccentric up on a box or an eccentric press. So if you don't have the control to kick up onto here and then come down for your eccentric, you could do the eccentric separate on the floor or even with your back against the wall. And then either from a squat position or ideally from this position here, you come through, feet off the edge of the box, bend the knees, sit into your straddle L, and then just try and straighten as much as you can. So that would be one way to work the transition from the bottom of the straddle press through to your straddle L if you don't quite have the flexibility or active control yet. Now the same could be done in the full eccentric, so the full stalled into eccentric. If you don't quite have the, the range to get through the bottom, elevate the hands up. Um, if you can't hold that straddle L, L, you could go high up on a box so you bend the legs on the way through. So it looks like this. Now, if you are controlled enough to come down for your eccentric so you can hold your straddle out, how do we start working the strength to come back up again? Now, I'd recommend you doing assistance exercises like tuck planche to build that protraction strength to be able to get that like nearly a planche type press. Uh, that will help massively to get that stall to press. But another drill I've used for a long time is to do partial range. So partial range is where you come down and ideally hit something like a target or go to a known position and come back again, and then you slowly get deeper and deeper. Now the partial ranges can be done in different ways. I could just go from a normal start of a straddle press, lift the feet up, go forwards like I'm gonna go into a stall to touch the target and come back again, or I could go from the handstand, go through the eccentric press, all the way down eccentric stall to touch the target and come back up again, and then slowly change the, the distance or position of the target.
Uh, the other partial range you could do is you could just go from that straddle L position with the with the hands raised up, pull back to a squat or a seated position on the box. So again, if you want to do the conditioning, you just need to work out what you count as one repetition and then do as many of those as you can. So it could be the full stall to press. It could be a eccentric press plus a straddle hold at the bottom. It could be a eccentric press or a press on the wall, a transition from the standing position through to that straddle L plus a straddle L hold. And then you just accumulate as many of those as you can, rest as needed in a set amount of time. So I worked for about half an hour yesterday and I got 22 reps um, coming off the floor. Now the stall to press is quite a complex movement that takes a little bit of conditioning to get. I definitely recommend you work on that tuck planche, get a very strong press to handstand, straddle press, ideally with two to three repetitions, and constantly work in your middle splits, your straddle, and your hamstring flexibility, both active, passive, and uh, compression work. So let me know if you have any questions. Thumbs up and subscribe will be appreciated. Uh, send me a message or stick anything down in the comments and I'll speak to you next time. Thanks guys.